Hi guys, this is T-Maps from 2A Syndicate. And if I would have known then what I know now about red dots, I would have took my time before I started buying a bunch of them. This is Red Dot 101. Okay guys, let's talk about red dots. Red dots are the new growing craze and every time you buy a gun now, we are buying guns and they're being sold optics ready. So that means that you can put a red dot on your pistol if you want to put a red dot on your pistol. The issue is, is that now the market is so flooded with red dots, a lot of us are just going out and buying red dots without even knowing exactly what we're looking for. And that's why I want to go over in Red Dot 101. So first and foremost, I'm going to get started. My very first red dot was this six hour Romeo Zero. The Romeo Zero that I bought was a micro red dot. And the micro red dot actually came with this metal plate. And this metal plate actually protects it. If not, then you would just have this nice little plastic deal sitting on top. If you drop it, your window cracks, it's busted. So when I bought it, I wanted to make sure I bought it with some kind of protection that went over it. It actually was a cheap budget red dot um, when I first got it. And I mean, they've since gone up in price because red dots are so now sought after. Um, I bought this one uh, just like this. Now when I go on and look at them, I don't even see these plates hardly anymore. I just see these guys being sold by themselves, but you can get them like this. But I digress. Anyway, this is a micro red dot from... Uh, six hour now a micro red dot the reason they call it micro is because it's smaller than most so if i take this micro red dot and i go ahead and take it out of my housing and i put it up against this viper you can see how much bigger the viper is than that one the window as well the back it's just a bigger red dot now the issue with this thing is is that it was so small when i put it on a full size pistol because I like full-size pistols it looked really small on there almost like it didn't belong but I didn't know and no one ever told me that you should buy a micro red dot for a actual smaller compact gun so red dots micro red dots actually fit on smaller um, guns like this micro gun or micro head micro red dots actually fit more on the compact guns that's what they're made for so as you can see this guy's clear there's nothing in it there's no magazine but if i go ahead and slide this on there you can see how it actually fits on the slide a little bit better because it's a micro red dot designed for a compact pistol that's one of the things that i didn't know that when you're looking at anything that's called micro, it's going to be smaller than the other one, even though the name says micro. But the way I looked at it when I first bought my red dot was everything is small. So they're all micro for the most part. But I digress. Um, the other thing that um, we're going to talk about is making sure you have the right red dot for your pistol. Um, I bought uh, my first big red dot per purchase was... My first big red dot purchase was the Viper uh, by Vortex. And the Viper by Vortex was my biggest red dot purchase. It was a little bit over $200 when I bought it. Um, they're pretty popular now. A lot of people have them. What I didn't notice when I first bought this gun, or what I didn't notice when I first bought this red dot was that the locks are on the back. What does that mean? Well, that means that any pistol that I mount this on that has a rear sight, it's going to block my locking mechanism. So I'm going to have to unlock it, sight it, and then lock it back and then put it on there. But recently going on the Vortex um, uh, YouTube page and looking at how they sight their Vipers, because I really wanted to know how they were getting away with this, is they actually remove the rear sight from every pistol when they sight their Vortex Vipers. And I'm sorry, but I really didn't want to uh, remove my rear sight every time I needed to, um, you know, 
zero my Viper. So when I went to zero the Viper, uh, I, I, I heard a lot of people saying that they can, they would zero it, remove it from the gun, loosen it up, um, lift it up, tighten it down, and then put it back on. And for me, it just didn't work. Um, it didn't work because I didn't want to have to mess with my sights just to, um, just to zero the Vortex Viper. And the other thing is, is that not only to zero the Vortex Viper, but when you got ready to change the battery, the battery was at the bottom. So if your battery ever went dead in your Viper, you'd have to remove that Viper, replace the battery, put it back on. And for the most part, when you are removing a red dot, um, the, the saying is to make sure that it's zero and re-zero, and you may have to do that. So to do that, I didn't want to have to loosen up the locks again that's in the back and go ahead and re-zero that. Um, so that just really didn't work all that great for me. And I wanted to make sure that when I got my other red dot this time, that I didn't have to remove my rear sights for it. The next thing that um, I wasn't really told uh, about the red dots is you have to definitely make sure, um, again, this is clear, there's nothing in here, uh, with your plates and your size, when you do buy a pistol that's optic ready, that you check the cuts of the optic slides. A couple of these that you know I put on there and installed on here, and this is the Walther PDP, um, this is the 1.0 version, and they have a 2.0 version because of this. Well, in the 1.0 version, I would have to either shave down a little bit of the front and the back of the site just to get it to slide down in there. If it doesn't have a square back and a square front, it's not going to fit in the uh, Walther PDP uh, all that great. And if you go on YouTube, there's a couple guys on there that said they had a Vortex Venom and they actually called... Vortex and said if they shave it down would it void the warranty they let them go ahead and shave it down just to put it in So that's the other thing that you want to make sure So you really really need to do your homework when it comes to that on your pistol because you want to make sure that it fits The other thing is the co-witness aspect of it um, The biggest thing with co-witness and you'll hear people talk about co-witnessing the red dots and that's the red dot actually being able to line up with the sights. And I know some of us have eye issues. I have astigmatism. And so with that being said, some people like to line up their red dots with the actual front sight and back sight and have a co-witness. But the way I feel about it is, is that if you have to line that up with that just to make it co-witness, you really don't need a red dot. Your red dots are basically designed not to be, not to have to co-witness them if you don't need to to be able to just line it up and be that first sight recognizable, um, to be that recognizable first sight on your target without trying to find your actual um, still sights that come with the gun. And that's the biggest thing that I've heard with the companies and that's from the companies. Again, that's not mine, that's from the companies that they say that the red dots are designed to hit that target first so you don't have to look for your front and rear sights and then you can go ahead and put rounds on that target a lot faster to acquire that target to make it happen. So um, with that being said as well, when we talk about co-witnesses, there are certain red dots that have a higher back and certain red dots that have a lower back. So what I mean by that is the back of the red dot, if your rear sights don't co-witness with the back of the red dot to co-witness with the front, then you're not going to co-witness at all. You're just going to see a block and then you're going to see your front sight. But that's uh, the cool thing about some of these red dots. This is the Sealy Calf 1X or X1. And this guy in the back has rear sights. So it comes with rear sights just in case your sights are so small you can't really co-witness anything with that front sight. So this comes with rear sights already on them. And you'll see the little dots on there and the dots are on there so you can line that up and co-witness that with your front sights just to make sure you're in line. If I show you this guy here, this guy is just flat. There is no actual co-witness um, 
witness dots for a rear sight on there. So you're just seeing a block when you look through this, a block and then a front sight. So you have to make sure when you are looking for a red dot, it's exactly what you're looking for. It's gonna do exactly what you want it to do. And therefore you have the right red dot so you can make one purchase or you can know what you're looking for. These are the things that were never told to me that I had to find out on my own before um, buying a bunch of different red dots. As you could see, I got Crimson Trace, I got Burst Fastfire, Viper, Steiner's, Sealy's, Bushnell. I also have a Hollow Sun, but I had to send it back because it was cracked. They are taking care of it, which is awesome of Hollow Sun. That's another thing that you want to look for in your sites too, is the company's warranty and what they're going to do for you. Viper is another one that is lifetime warranty. Burris is lifetime warranty as well. Um, I don't really know about Crimson Trace. Uh, I know that Steiner is that way as well. And the, the difference with the Steiner, and you saw me lift it up, the Steiner is a closed emitter. With the closed emitters, it's making it a little bit easier because you're not really worried about anything getting inside your sights and murkying it up. If you have your sights and you're outside and you're training and you got a lot of dirt and dust, um, I've heard some people say that that can get kind of stuck in here. And when it gets stuck in there, it's kind of hard for that red dot to project um, to your actual window that you can see that. So then you t have to take a Q-tip and clean it out. That's one of the, the nice things that I lo love about um, closed emitters is that they are designed not to have that problem. So all you have to do is just make sure that your windows are clean on your closed emitters and um, then you can acquire your site. Uh, the other big thing about red dots as well is the actual window of the red dot. So as you can see, this uh, Romeo Zero has a pretty small window. It's a pretty small window, but it's a micro dot. It's supposed to be small. That's what it's sold as. It's a little bit high, but it's a little bit in width. It's a little bit small. If I go to this Viper, you can see how much bigger the Viper's window is. The Viper's window is high and it's also wide. If you do have trouble with your vision, these kind of windows help. If I go to the Sealy that I have on here, you can see how much bigger the Sealy's window is um, than the Viper. It's a really big window. I really like it. I don't want to flash you guys, but it's a really big window. You can see how big it is on the top as well. And then with closed admitters, you pretty much get what you get. This window is pretty big on the Steiner. I love how it is. I like how big that window is. I don't mind flashing myself versus you guys. I'd rather do that, but I love how big this window is on the closed admitter, and it makes it seem um, to me that it's as big as uh, one of those uh, windows on the open admitter red dots. So with that being said, guys, just be smart about what type of pistol you're gonna put it on, what you want it to do. If you have any comments, um, to, to, that you would like to give to me as well, something that I might have missed, something that you noticed that happened with Red Dots, please put those in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And always, train hard, train often. <music>